All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of The Mess in the Middle. Welcome to the show, Rahina. I appreciate you being here. And let's take a few minutes to talk a little bit about your journey and how you're showing up on the planet right now. So yeah. please join us. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here at The Mess in the Middle and just excited to put, hopefully put out something inspiring for someone out there and to also hopefully listen to more inspiring stories that come through from you. And so happy to share my journey. So my journey is and my story is really about coming from a South Asian immigrant family right. with a very high emphasis on what can we achieve in life? Like, how do we mm -hmm. get safety? How do we get financial safety? That's the biggest thing. Most people see as safety is like sure. financial means and to some degree status as well. So how do we get there? That was always and for not even for immigrant families. I'm sure this is for people across the board. We're all striving, especially in Western culture, to achieve constantly. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was taught. That's what I believed was completely normal. And I followed that path my whole life. Like I am valuable if I achieve. So mm -hmm. I did this whole, this is the thing most people do. I went to school, went to college, and I went to grad school. I started working my corporate career. And each time I did that, I had a few, I kept changing things around. It was first mm -hmm. I got to like, med school and then I was like no that that seems like a lot for someone who's like a sensitive person like myself yeah. you know I, could, I tried a few different things just shadow doctors things like that I was like no maybe that's not the right path and then I ended up going to grad school for health administration is where I got my master's in and my goal has always been really to help people and I was like oh I can help mm -hmm. people this way and, and after a few years in the corporate grind and like being like I imagine myself here this is where I imagine myself and I still am not satisfied so what's going on? And I talked to my family about it. They were like, no, this is life. This is, this is it. It's, I got that too. No, there's nothing else. This is it. Yeah. And I'm like, you got to be wrong. There's got to be something else. <laughs> no, exactly. And I was like, this is it. This is the end journey that we have been striving for. And that feeling of just not being fulfilled or satisfied. And then I hit a point in about four years ago where I realized I don't think this is how I can continue living forever. <laughs> it's just not sustainable for my mental well-being mm -hmm. and for my soul. Sure. Really. sure. Well, I started to explore different paths. I had what I would call like a spiritual like a moment of awakening almost, but it's more than that. I What I realized is, oh my gosh, I have not been present my whole life. I've just been trying to achieve one thing after the next, not really thinking yeah. about how I feel in the moment. And that was the biggest like takeaway out of everything. And there's so much more, of course, but the biggest thing I was like, I have to be present and it's about the journey. It's not about the to the end. whatever it is, like X, Y, Z, like I, none of it matters if I can't be with myself and happy with myself right now. That's a lot. It takes, how old do you think you were when you started exploring what that lo would look like for you when I actually let myself explore that I was 29 that's when I okay. like like that because I did everything and it was always like oh no it'll get better like when this happens or it'll get better once I finish grad school it'll get better once I start working it'll get better once I get a promotion it'll get better once I like to get a partner or have a family what all the things and then I was like it just doesn't seem like it's getting better <laughs> Even when you achieve those, that's the even more disappointing thing that once you actually get that, absolutely, it's like, oh, it's kind of empty. And that's the thing that's hard is because you can't even learn that lesson without hitting those goalposts almost or those like milestones. And once you get there, you're like, what? I've been taught that this is what I'm going to get out of. This is where I get everything I want out of life. And then you realize, no, that's really not it. No, you know, though you're young to figure that out. A lot of people, don't actually see that or people that I've ran into till they're in their 40s. If they're fortunate, remember, we all evolve at different things. And sometimes something either really negative happens, you have some kind of trauma in your life, or somebody gets you on a path, or you're just so unsettled that you start to explore that on your own to figure out, yeah, there's got to be something else out there for me. There's got to be more to it. I think all of our to tie it to entrepreneurship and next we'll get into that for you but I think that's that pivotal moment where you say 
I was on this path because that's what I've been groomed to do, or that's what I was expected to do, or whatever it is, regardless yeah. if it was intentional or not, it's the path you ended up on. But you yeah. feel just so unsettled that it's, I'm not living my purpose. I don't know what my purpose is. I just know it's not this. And I okay. need to explore to see what else is there. Yeah. And like you said, I was lucky when I, I figured it out at 29. A lot of people, like you said, figured it out later in life. And I think also, though, I think this is because of two things. I think the corporate grind in the last, I, of course, I wasn't alive over 40 or so years ago, but I think it's gotten really intense in the last few decades, especially. And people are burning out like faster than ever. Well, I'm seeing it, at least I assume, like, it's hard for me to compare, of course, generations, but I'm seeing people just burnt out constantly in my generation. And the second thing, which I want us to talk about, because I think it's important to put out there, is that I am a very sensitive person. Mm -hmm. And I, because of it, I'm very deeply connected to my emotions and my body. And so I can, and not, I don't, from my observation, I don't think everyone is always like that. People right. have the ability to push their emotions down or they can push things down and hide them. I'm not capable of that. If I'm sad, like I have to feel it and sit in my sadness. And the good thing about it is that I can quickly process my emotions then and okay. let them through me. But I also, I just want to mention that because a lot of people see being sensitive as like a not weakness. a weakness. Yeah. No. And especially in the corporate world, they don't show emotion, just do your job. Don't show people like what you are underneath all that. And I just don't believe in that. I think it's okay to be who you are everywhere. You sh which you should be, because at the end of the day, you're the only one. I started learning that in my 30s. I was in a sales position. I was one of the few females in a primarily male industry. And I had to wear a lot of different masks where I felt like I was a little bit of a chameleon. And fast forward, I did that for five years. I was like, I don't even know who I am. I need to step back and say... What's that old Julia Roberts movie, The Bride, Runaway Bride, where she's, I need to figure out what kind of ed eggs I like. Yeah. She was changing her whole being for the different partners. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was doing that in work. Mm -hmm. I could be this person with this person. I can, and then I could be more professional here and I could be juvial here and whatever I need to be to work in that. And I was just like, God, I don't like any of this. Yeah. And same thing, just get to a place where I saved up a bunch of money and I quit work and went out on my own. Yeah. Um, scary, yeah. but I was so incongruent with what I was doing. It was painful. <laughs> no, I completely align with that. I did the same thing finally in the last year or so. I like was able to make the leap, figure out what it is that I wanted to start doing and move through it. But I'm even in my newer journey. I'm, I feel like I'm in the middle, but it's a much more satisfying middle like I'm present I'm very present. Present. like I can enjoy the middle now without constantly thinking oh my gosh I have to reach this end goal good good it's goals we it's good to have goals you mm -hmm. can't what the process of reaching those goals what's the point so do you remember a moment in time where you just said I'm not doing this anymore and I don't know what the tomorrow looks like but it's time I gotta go it was a slow during, not slow, but there were a few different points, I think, that, that mm. for me. So it started four years ago. I actually went on a three-week vacation. I came back on, and then I was like, oh, I should be like rejuvenated and excited to go back to work. I went back to work and I was like, oh, no, I'm not rejuvenated at all. And I'm just like not happy to be here. And I think in that moment, I was like, that was like the light bulb moment for me. That was like, oh, I can't do this forever. And then I had another thing. So I was single at the time. I'm still single. But at the time, I was always waiting like, oh, once I get a partner, there will be financial stability. Then I can like explore other options, things that make me happy. It's always in the back of my mind. I hadn't fully faced it or looked at it, but I was like, it'll happen, whatever. Around that same time, I was like, wait, I'm sitting here waiting for this like magical thing to happen to me or this thing that like could happen tomorrow. It could happen in 10 years. I don't know the timeline. And that hit me too. And it's like, I need to figure out what it looks like for me today. Like what my happiness in my present looks like, like a fulfilled version of me looks like in my present. So right. those two things happen simultaneously. Okay. And, hey, what do I start looking for? How do I search for the right answer? And I've always really loved people. I've always really loved helping people and touching people. And mental health has grown a lot in the last, I would mm -hmm. say, 
maybe five or six years or even maybe a little longer, but I've heard about it a lot more. But I always cared about people and I never thought to put the two together. Oh, you could work in this field. And so I started taking courses like coaching courses and other courses just to help build that muscle and build that skill and see if I really liked it. I wanted to test it out. Okay. And I did enjoy it. I like practice with people. I really enjoyed helping people get to like the root of their issues and moving forward and with their lives the way they saw their lives. But I wasn't ready to commit to it 100%. And what happened then was I actually made a move from the East Coast to the West Coast and I'm now in California. This is about two years ago. And I started another job. And that job, I switched from, let's see, the tech world more into the public health world. And I was right. like, okay, public health, like that's my background more than like, I'm helping people. That's really what I want to do. It was always, that was the core of everything I tried to do. It's like, I want to help people, but how do I do it? And when I was doing that job, it was definitely touching people, but too far away, like too far removed mm -hmm. from what would give me satisfaction. And I was like, I'm still not there. And it was after that job. I was like, all right, I think I know the answer. I've been building this up for several years. It's just a matter of taking the leap. And so about a year ago, I was finally ready. Like it's like now or never. If I don't do this now, I'm going to sit here waiting for how many years? So let me ask. So why not just find it? As educated as you are, why not just find another job that gets you working with the people? Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. I pondered on it and I went back and forth and I was like, I have a certification, but for me to coaching was not that big. And I think coaching as a job only became big in the last maybe year or so. And I wasn't fully aware of it. And it was also the lifestyle, quite frankly, mm -hmm. that I was like, I want to be able mm -hmm. to take a vacation when I want to take a vacation. I don't want to feel encumbered by a schedule like I want to be able to live my life freely and work with the people that I want to work with that want to work with me and then also have time for the other things that I really care about okay. so that's where I was trying to get to yeah yeah <laughs> because that's a component of entrepreneurship that I don't think a lot of us give as much credit as we should we yeah. were you're right when you go back to look 40 years ago at least when I was growing up as a kid Parents worked, they had corporate jobs, they stayed at them until they retired. Um, it was just, that was what was expected of you. You get a job, you start at the bottom, you work your way up, and then you go there. Now, my generation did, of course, start changing things. I'm not that old, but for my parents when they were kids and for my grandparents, of course, but they didn't explore that. Even if they thought about or tried to imagine what life could be like with freedom, being able to say, you know, what? Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm working half days and Fridays, I'm going to do this and not have to worry about is money still coming in? Am I providing for my family? Am I disappointing anybody? Am I meeting expectations? All of that kind of goes away when you're able to say, I'm living my best life. No, and if I that's 10 hours a week, and you can provide for your family and have that freedom. Oh my yeah. gosh, what better gift in life than that? No, absolutely. It's funny because we're just uh, so in it now. We're so deep in this corporate lifestyle. Yeah. Forget and don't even realize or don't even know. Forget. We don't even know that there are other possibilities. And I was lucky to be shown those possibilities. Just like through taking all these courses, I started seeing women entrepreneurs and I never realized before, oh, this is a path. Like you can work for yourself. And yeah, you have to hustle in different ways. You have to do things and work hard. But there's a joy that comes from that's so different from working for mm -hmm. someone else and feeling so constrained by schedule or eight hour, whatever it is. Yeah. There are times now that I work like I work at midnight, but it's fine because like I'm doing You're something. You're choosing it. Yeah to do that. And there's days where I forget like what the schedule is. And I'm just like, I have to do 10 things and like the whole day has gone working, but it's okay because I'm happy with it. Yeah. That I think is a big difference as well. When you have a job, you have to do what your employer expects of you. And again, yeah. that's what you were hired for. So it's not that you can complain about that because you're trading time for dollars. Yeah. But when you are on your own, it's a completely different thing. I haven't spent much time of my career in corporate. I have very few jobs have I ever had in a corporate environment, but I did do um, my first entrepreneur thing. Sorry. I had coffee shops in California. And when I moved to the East Coast, I actually went to work for Starbucks. So painful. So I almost felt like I was in a straitjacket. It was yeah. so painful. And 
don't get me wrong, Starbucks is an amazing business model and tremendously successful because it does one thing right. It it controls every part of a customer's experience from their employees to their processes to their staff. And that's why they were able to scale so fast. But it's very suffocating if you're somebody like me. If something mm -hmm. breaks, I'm a business owner, right? We're problem solvers. We just go, we handle it, we get it done, we get a repair person in and we keep going. In an environment like Starbucks, it's no, you have to put in a request and yeah. you're only allowed to work with certain vendors. And they, again, I get whether you have to control it, but at the same time, it's very suffocating for somebody like me that is just not made for that environment. Oh, I completely understand. I think when you start, I'm trying to think of the word, it's not coming to me right now, but when you start putting things in a line and everything is all the same, you almost lose a yeah. piece of humanity in that. Also, if the efficiency, like you said, because there's so many like approvals and whatnot that you need to get anything done. So yeah, it's definitely a slow paced thing and you're constantly waiting on someone else, which is no fun. No, no. Okay, so we got where you're coming from. Where are you going? That's a funny question. I think in my journey, I'm so focused now on being present that of okay. course I think about where I'm going. Yes, I have like goals, but I really try hard to stay in the moment. Yeah. But what I'd like to be eventually is the hope is to be running a successful coaching business and potentially like now that I've had the freedom to get out of the box, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I could be inspired to do something else tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. Like I have to give myself that. I wouldn't even call it grace, but that permission to like, it's okay to change your mind because, and I think it's more likely that for this to happen as a small business owner, things can evolve because you're constantly learning and growing and your mission as a person, you are changing. So your right. mission might be changing or like the vision of what you're trying to put out in the world might be changing. So I'm more trying to work in flow with that now. Maybe like, this is good. And if something, you know, hits me and inspires me tomorrow, I can add it. I can pivot. I'm open to all of it. So the goal at the moment is to be a successful business owner, to always love what I'm doing. Okay. I keep putting it out there. And I think my hope is with that for people to keep coming to me. But yeah, the short term goal is to continue coaching and just really help people and change lives for the better and help people live more confidently, more sure of who they are, joyfully. I want people to, not to say that to have the same experience that I did, but to understand that there's other things out there if you want them to be for you. So what area is your expertise for coaching? Yeah, so I'm what I call it is an authenticity coach. So I'm going into people to help them find like clarity in what their goals are. Like, what do you want in life? Because um, a lot of people don't know, like they're mm -hmm. so caught up in, in the hamster wheel. They don't even know, but they don't feel good about life. They're like, mm, I want like this and I got it and it's fine. But is that really what you want? And some people might know, but they're like, no, it's not possible. So I want to help you gain the confidence to be able to okay. achieve things. And that doesn't mean you have to do what I did, quit my job. So yeah, of course. Trip. Like you can start small. Like you can, if maybe you have an inner artist that has never been explored, maybe you love to explore nature, but you never let yourself do these things. Or maybe you're having trouble in relationships because you don't know yourself. Or maybe you're having trouble in career because again, you don't know yourself well enough. So the way I look at, people is very holistically. So right. me, like everything is connected. Like your relationship will impact your career. It will impact your self-worth. It will impact your relationships with your other families or members or friends, not just like your romantic relationships. So I really want to get to the core of that and help people gain the confidence to be their best selves and live as joyfully and easefully, if that's a word, <laughs> as possible. It should be a word if it's not. There's there's a lot of lessons that I think without getting on that path of discovery, so many people miss out. And then they look back at 50 and say, oh, I should have done this or I should have taken a chance here. I should have taken a chance there. When I was in my 20s, these kind of conversations weren't happening. Yeah. Not yet. And it's fulfilling for me to see all of this finally coming out and people talking about it and it being acceptable because it was not. I was a little bit of a radical, meaning I got into this stuff early. I was listening to Tony Robbins when I was 23, 24, somewhere in there. I stumbled across some of his stuff and 
I think I still have his original books, but I was like, wow, what a radical way of thinking. This is so cool. And it was just such a different time to get us to that place. These feelings we're having are not new. I guarantee you go back a hundred years. They felt this unsettled way of life. They just didn't have it available and it had to evolve to this. So we're pretty fortunate to be here right now in this time. No, absolutely. With all the things evolving. No, for sure. And I would say it's like huge that you were able to do that in a time where other people weren't. I would, I'm sure I was also able to do it because I was inspired by others. But yeah. being one of the first to do it, like that's yeah. 10 times harder because you don't even know like what you're doing. I had doing. no idea. Lots of books, lots yeah. and lots of books. There weren't really seminars yet. There were books on tape. Yeah. And then, like I said, some of the psychology stuff that was coming out, you go from really weird stuff like Freud. Then you get to the I'm okay, you're okay stuff, I think, that came out in the 70s, maybe. And then in the 80s, like I said, we start to see the Brian Tracy's and the Jim Rohn's and Tony Robbins and all that starting to evolve a little bit. It was still, one, men, it was more okay for men to do it, believe it or not, than women. It was weird for women. So it wasn't that I did it under the radar. I just did my own path. So people would just say, oh, she's, or not even that. I would see other women. I'm just like, mm, I'm not quite like that. And I was okay being in my own lane. Yeah. Even if I was a party of one, it was worth it for me to stay congruent with who I am, even yeah. if it didn't fit in with everybody else, because everybody else was climbing the corporate ladder. Yeah. And I think I remember I was probably, oh gosh, maybe 24, 25. And I was working in an office at a 7.30 to 3.30 type job, Monday mm -hmm. through Friday kind of stuff, doing the same thing every day. Yeah. And I said, if I have to do this much longer, I literally felt like I would walk in and put my chain around the desk and sit down almost like an elephant, you know, that's tied to a pole that never leaves. Yes. I felt like that. I'm like, I am slowly dying. I'm only in my twenties here. Why am I doing this? Yeah. I've got to figure out a different path. Yeah. No, and I just send you on that, that trajectory for something else. No, absolutely. It's so interesting to me that you said that it was okay for men to do that. I was just like, Wondering that walking and I'm, I feel like because unfortunately or fortunately we're living in what is still a man's world. So like mm -hmm. men are like paving the path and the women are trying to fit in. But mm -hmm. I think we're seeing things differently now. Like women oh, are for like, sure. we can leave our paths too. And whether that looks different or not, because men and women are different and maybe the inherent structure of the way we function is a little bit different. But what is different, but I feel like with women being more comfortable choosing to pave their own paths different opportunities are coming into light. Like we're kind of, we're trying to work differently. These things are, and the way you started your own journey, I'm sure. Yeah. What's comfortable for you is different for the typical man, I'm assuming. Yeah, probably, probably. So you've left your corporate job now? I have left it, yes. Okay. And so you're just coaching full-time? I'm coaching full-time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As your main job. How do you go about finding clients these days? A few different ways. So. I actually partner with different companies, like whether that's larger companies like the Googles of the world or Amazon. Oh, nice. Because even they have in their corporate structure, they have like HR services and the, people are like going through things like we're stressed out. Like we don't feel like we belong here. There's imposter syndrome. There's all these things happening in these big work settings and people really want someone to come help them through that. So companies like that. I also partner with like smaller studios, like yoga studios that I know the mission aligns with like really putting like the mind, body, soul connection. That's, that's the focus, the primary focus. And that's really mm -hmm. what I want people to focus on as well. I bring the mind piece, hopefully, and like the connection to the soul from a di different lens, not the physical lens. Of course. Um, and so, yeah, I partner with all these studios. There's social media, of course. Clients come in through different ways. Sometimes that's you just, awesome. yeah, I've sometimes just tried to help a person out. Like I've, I've offered it. When I started out, I was offering free sessions and I saw how much need there was with that. So even through that word of mouth, yeah, people come through different ways and like yours. Exactly. So with the folks that you're helping, do you see common patterns that these guys are getting stuck in? Maybe it's not necessarily a job. Is it always a job? Is it mindset? Is it, where's that turn out for you? No, it's not always a job. Oftentimes, very oftentimes it is, but... A lot of times it's also relationships or like relationships with 
I wouldn't even say partners because it's interesting. A few of the people that have come to me have been South Asian, which I assume for obvious reasons, like people can relate to a South Asian. So maybe they're more comfortable on that front. It's been a lot of like self-worth, just not knowing who they are. And it oftentimes ties back into their relationship with their immediate family, maybe parents or whoever's raised them. I've seen some of that, but it all, most of it really stems from like pressure. It's like mm. whether it means pressure from society and like the need to fit in there, whether it means pressure from your family, like I mentioned, whether that's pressure from your peers, it's the constant need to like fit in somewhere. Mm. And that's like the current, the recurring thread that I see that I want to help people get to the root of. Interesting. I wonder how many people start a business for that reason, if that ties into it. Do you feel like you see mostly self-employed people or employees? Mostly right. employees. Okay. Okay. I know with self-worth and fitting in, even though we probably wouldn't call it that, it's still a huge thing for business owners. We get online, we look at social media, we see what our competitors are doing or others out there a couple steps ahead of us. We have the whole FOMO kick in and the, yeah. I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I shouldn't be in business for myself, clearly, because I'm not showing up like they're showing up. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, No, no matter what we do there will always be pressure for sure and so far i haven't had as many let's say like self-employed folks and it's maybe it's because the story that i have put out there about myself and also i'm trying to hit those like root core yeah. issues and some of the entrepreneurs that i know have mostly worked through those so they're like next level so i'm guessing at least that's why i would love to work with entrepreneurs as well but yeah have you studied spiral dynamics I have it. No, check it out. So Spiral Dynamics, I'm not sure who started that. It's been around for quite some time, but it's kind of like a DNA helix where as you evolve through different colors. And so each color represents a different stage that we're in as human beings. It's pretty easy to find. I would definitely check it out. I'll leave a link in the show notes for anybody else that has interest. But what it is, it explains to you as we are humans, how we evolve through this place of life. Sometimes you don't. So I think the first is like red and red means it's when you're younger. So you're very narcissistic. You don't know about a world outside of yours. You don't really understand how other people interact with you and how their emotions affect your world. And it goes through each stage like, okay, now you become aware and you're no longer narcissistic and you start uh, realizing the things around you. And it goes through all the different colors. It's such an amazing thing. But where it came really in handy for me is when I got certified in NLP, as I learned about spiral dynamics, I could tell what stage somebody was at by the language they were using. So okay. spiral dynamics will help you wrap your head around, okay, so if my ex-husband was in red, and I, at the time, I was in orange and I couldn't figure out why we weren't communicating. I'm like, why don't you understand this? This just seems simple. And for him, because he was looking through it at a different lens than I was, it was never going to make sense because we weren't, he could have been speaking French and I was speaking Chinese and we did not hear it. That's so but, interesting. Yeah. Um, I love the, I don't want to say labels, but I love that there's like- No, words. simplicity. Yeah. Simplicity. Yeah. Well, because I think- as we book in this world, as entrepreneurs and as a coach, I am constantly assessing where people are at, how they think. So I'm doing that, but I'm not necessarily categorizing them where they are. I just am assessing and, okay, this is where this person is at. And I'll give them maybe words, just here's, they're not going to hear me. They're ready to listen to this or not like that. But that's fascinating. I'll definitely look into it. I love that. Yeah, but it's helpful. So if you're in a sales position, especially mm -hmm. as a small business owner, we want to go up and just throw up all of our information. Here's my product services. Here's the benefits features. Here, buy my stuff. But without really understanding who the other person is that you're trying to sell to, we constantly tote this, know your avatar, know your ideal customer. Take it a step further. Go back to the psychology side of that. Mm -hmm. Kind of body language are they using? What are their words? How do they learn? Are they kinesthetic or auditory? Do they tie all that in. What's their body language saying? Are they comfortable? Are they not comfortable? Are they frowning at you? Once you understand that more, then you're able to meet them where they're at instead of trying to force them into your stuff. 
yeah. in your world. So it learning that stuff in my 30s was so helpful because I can, when you're having a conversation with somebody and they start to check out, you, yeah, you, you know why and you correct. Yeah, there's a reason for it. It's not just like they're bored or they're not listening to you versus right. not at that level, maybe like they're not at the yellow or whatever that means. Right. I don't yeah, that you're just not speaking to them in a way. I'm so uh, I'm not an auditory learner. I'm a kinesthetic learner. So I want to mm -hmm. touch it, show it to me and then let me touch it. I yeah. want to touch it. I want to build it. And I'm fine like that. And early on, I didn't understand that. I was like, gosh, why can't I just hear the teacher and do what he says? Yeah. Because that's not the way I learn. So the more options you can give your customers um, to deliver a product, the more successful you're going to be because we learn in so many different ways. Some people want the long story and the journey and the ups and downs and the emotions and others just want the facts. Just give me the bottom line. What is it going to do? And it's our responsibility as a service provider to pay attention to them. Oh, completely. And I think that's what is also really gratifying about like one-on-one -on -one work like coaching mm -hmm. or any, a lot of other jobs that people have also, but like you can spend time with one person and really get to know who they are because mm -hmm. the corporate system again is very much, and not just the corporate system, schools. Schools are designed yeah. for us to, this is the end product, let's all get here. But we haven't given thought to like how people learn differently and do things differently and function differently. We're all just so focused on like hitting those like, grades or AT scores, all that. Yeah. So if I'm a business owner and I'm just getting going and I'm in that place where I'm just focused on the goals, yes. what would be your advice to me? My advice would be, it depends on a few things. It depends on your personality type or do you think, do you okay. have like yourself to start this? If you don't, I would actually recommend getting a business coach. That's what okay. I did. Figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. That's very important before you do anything. Okay. And you accomplish, yes, you have this goal and vision for yourself. Do you have the skill set already built in or to accomplish this on your own? If not, hire someone because we can't know everything. We just need a little bit of support. So hire someone competent. I know there's also a lot of business coaches out there. So I just have to vet the right people. That's the first thing I would say to do. And then the second thing is be consistent because you're going to be doing a lot of things for free at first. You're going to be putting things out and you're going to be like, no, it's not working. I still have those days. And I'm like, what do I do next? And I'm like, just try something new. A part of the process is being creative. So enjoy that. Enjoy that like, that maybe it's newfound for you. Maybe it's not, but enjoy the creativity and like what comes with it. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe you're trying a new idea today. Mm -hmm. You're putting it out on social media. You're putting out an email. You're telling a story differently the way you might before. Enjoy that process because the more you do, the, the, you're going to have to keep doing this. It's not going to stop tomorrow. This is a forever thing if you choose to be an entrepreneur. And the other thing, which is probably the hardest thing to do, is to you know, have some patience and some faith. Yeah, I would definitely say patience and faith. So what do you do when you have down days? And you're like, do I want to go back and get a job? Do you teeter with that? Yeah, of course. I think about it from the perspective of, yes, Maybe one day I will have to get a job again, but it doesn't have to be full time. It doesn't have to be my primary thing. Okay. Uh, primary focus is my mission for what the work I want to put out there. So with entrepreneurship, the thing is that there's not as much consistency, of course. So like some months you're doing better. Feast and famine. Like, yeah. like, that, that's the problem <laughs> that we're all trying to get out of. But yeah, and so there's days where I'm like, maybe I should get a part time job, but it doesn't have to be like a corporate part time job. I don't have to do that. I've been tutoring kids. What do I love to do? So I tap into that some more. I'm always looking into what's fun. Like maybe I could go to a flower shop tomorrow and work there for a little while. And it's a big part of the journey for me has also really been, I mentioned creativity, been accessing that part of myself. Okay. Um, I felt like it was shut down almost for so many years. And everyone is creative in different ways. That's another big thing. Like I am not necessarily your typical like artist I don't go around painting or sketching all of that mm -hmm. I love being creative through my voice and through storytelling and it took me some time to learn that about myself I didn't really understand that because all I saw was like creativity comes through like xyz and so things like that or even working with children gives me so much joy so I, that's why I tried to tutor and there's creative aspects to all of these things it's not about again only creating like on a paintboard 
So yeah, I think I answered your question. That was all very long. No, I think, no, no, I think that's good because that's a perspective that we've, that I've not explored on this podcast. Mm -hmm. We're taught or mainstream says you have a job, you work at the job while you're working your side hustle. As soon as your side hustle has got enough, then you leave the job and you're all in over here, burn all the bridges. But you just presented a little different perspective. It's, I did the job. I'll find ways to support myself. I stay true to this, but I don't have to kill myself or burn myself out trying to make that happen. I allow this to evolve as it's going to evolve. And if I have to pick up something on the side there just to keep the lights on, then that's okay too. It's being okay with accepting a position like that. And it's not so black and white. And that gray perspective is a good place for anybody that may be struggling with the two extremes because it doesn't have to be. No, not at all. And that's what we're taught. So it's really hard to come out of that. that, No, there is a middle ground. Even there, there is, there are options. You just have to be willing to see them because it's seen like a demotion. Like, why would you go, you have a degree, a master's degree, this thing, use that, make money from that. And yeah, that's the obvious answer. And I maybe I'll choose to do that at some point too. If I'm really feeling like I'm like at yeah. some point running, just my funds are running low or something like that, maybe I'll do that. But it's about just being like, what is the right option for me in this moment? Of course, financially, I'm not telling anyone to disregard that because it is extreme right. to keep your finances secure, but also your just inner self. What can we do yeah. to support both of those things in balance? Yeah, that is great because that's a great perspective. So anybody that's on the fence that feels like I'm forced on one side of the track or the other, Rohina just gave you a good option to, and I think maybe some people don't choose that because there's uncertainty there. So if certainty is one of my values up there at the top, I may think I only have this or I have this because I have to have something that anchors me. But the gray is a great option, but you will deal with a little bit of uncertainty as to how you're kind of wading through that. Maybe that gray is like you're going down the river and you're floating. So as long as you stay within the banks, you're probably fine. (laughs) But it allows you a little bit more flexibility to go through things. It's stressful making that pivot. It really is. The thing I've learned is that there's going to be stress. No, no matter, matter what, what. <laughs> yeah. so just about what are you willing to nurture in this mm-hmm. moment? Are you like, there will always be uncertainty. That's another thing. There will always be change. There will always be uncertainty. There will always be stress. Yeah. Do you want to deal with those things. Do you want to befriend them? And do you want to say, all right, I can accept it in this moment. Mm-hmm. Say, let's ride the waves together. Or I can fight it and be like, I don't want to be uncertain for it. I got to know. And and that's okay too if that's where you're at. Yeah. It's a different kind of struggle. And then maybe the corporate life is better if that's, you know, mm-hmm. for a person that's set up that way. And I, I get it because I also came from that. That was what I was fighting before I quit. I was like, I need certainty. I need structure. But we also need those things because that's what we're taught to need. We're not taught about the way we can live yeah. different. So it's, a, it's not an easy choice. But if you're willing to shift your perspective on things, It's a possible choice. I often say this new marketplace that I've built hasn't really generated any revenue. My income comes from my agency side, which Mm -hmm. has since forever. But people are like, why are you working so hard on this project? Because it's just launching. So there hasn't, there's no money yet. Of course not. But it's been a couple of years of in the works of building it and trying to decide what everything was going to look like. And it's massive. It's the largest project I've ever done. But my stress from that is is almost like a positive stress. And I know there's you stress, there's positive stress, there's negative stress. It's not negative. Oh my goodness, it's not making any money and I'm doing all this work. It's more stress of I just want to get it all done because I'm excited about what it is. Is it stressful? It is. Is yeah. it pushing me to limits my own skill set? Absolutely. Am I having to grow as a human to that next stage to be able to pull something this big off? Absolutely. But I wouldn't trade it. Yeah. Even though it's not made a dime yet, I still wouldn't trade it. Yeah. 
because yeah. you're listening to your like your right. deep self and your truest right. self yeah. and your like spirit is almost alive in that process right. so of course there's trade-offs but like it's a great trade-off at this point at least for you yeah i'm very congruent with it so yeah. dark days my decisions are not oh should i quit should i keep going that's never the two sides of the coin i'm looking at they're normally like okay i'm stressed but i'm tired or i'm stressed but i got to find other ways to get certain things done it's never is this a good decision or bad decision or do i want to leave it or not yeah. Once you are congruent with what you're supposed to be doing, that one comes off the table. It's, I know what I'm doing. It's, yeah, you're, I'm still going to have stress, but it doesn't change my path at all. No, absolutely. And that's actually yeah. what I want to do with my work too, is I want people, when I say I want people to be their most authentic selves, in your words, I want them to be their most congruent or aligned selves. Yeah. That you're just living like when, even if when you're working constantly, you're living that moment with joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. just. Maybe not exhilarated, but maybe you're content. And that's better yeah. than rest. Absolutely. Better than working at a job that you're miserable and feel like you're chained to. Yes, for sure. So what would be some advice that you would share with somebody that is in this place where they know that they're not settled? Yes. yes. But they don't know where to start to find the answers. What would you suggest? I think it depends on <clears throat> what it is that you're struggling with. So let's, okay. uh, I can use a couple examples. So the bigger ones that come up, of course, are career. If you're not satisfied. Try different things. Like while you have the safety of your, your job, not even to say that everyone's going to quit their jobs and start their own thing, but explore different things. What lights you up? Where can you be creative in your life? What gives you joy? And don't think about, it doesn't have to simply be like a hobby. Like it doesn't have to be, I'm making pottery. Maybe pottery does light you up and that's beautiful and amazing. But maybe you just love to talk and that lights you up. Do you want to do something with that? Maybe you love to listen. What can you start doing? Like really pay attention to like where you're getting your happiness from and start following that and see if you can add that into your life in little ways. And for those that are maybe struggling with relationships, I do recommend actually people seek out mental health guidance, whether it's a therapist or coach, like there's more options out there for struggling financially. I think free therapy is not always available, but it's becoming more available. So try to bring in more self-awareness. I think that's really key in any aspect of your life. One, try to, and most people need therapy to, to help with that, unless you're a self-introspective person. <laughs> so try to understand yourself, try to understand your dynamic with different people, try to understand the why of why you're doing certain things the way you're doing. It's really all about that why. Once you hit the why, is when you, the big realizations start like happening and you can mm -hmm. start changes in your life. I did find when I got divorced, I actually went and saw a psychologist for a little while to help me navigate the waters. I was only 26. I had three kids under the age of five. I was like, oh, Lord, what am I doing? And I needed a neutral third party to come in and say, okay, Audra, this is what adulthood looks like. And these are your options. And I have to tell you, one of the best uh, things I've ever done for myself, because she really just laid it out. Like, I'm a very matter of fact. I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. And I just need, just tell me what it is. I'm, I can do the work. I just need a direction. And she started turning me on to books about different kinds of things. And this is how you deal with this. And this is how you deal with that. And the more I got, oh my gosh, I was like, oh my, all the lights started coming on in this dark room that I felt I was living in. And that in itself nourishes you so much. It's oh, okay. I understand why I feel this way. Or, I don't have to feel this way. There are options. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if you don't, I didn't know what I didn't know. Nobody no. ever showed me that side until I started opening up. And I was like, holy crap, there's a whole other world out here I don't know anything about. How yeah. exciting is that? Yeah. And that can be huge to, to realize that because we yeah. live in our own minds. We don't know what we don't know. We just assume the world runs the way we think that it runs until we are able to step outside of that boundary. And most of us can't learn that until we're either pushed there or yeah. someone book accidentally or we talk to someone that helps us to that place. So it's about stepping outside of ourselves, using maybe the tools that, that we can to do that. Yeah. Do you have any books that you recommend for people? I'm trying to think. And to be quite honest, books, 
were not a big part of my journey. I okay. learned through a lot of deep reflection and like just mm-hmm. self inspecting like, why am I doing this? Or just my journey is what really mm-hmm. taught me a lot of things or like my guide or my, my mentors and people that would guide me. So I'm trying to think of what's coming up um, book-wise. Nothing off the top of my head, but if something does, I'll... Okay. I'll okay. Here. Yeah. There were a couple pivotal ones for me. The one, Tony Robbins one, when I was pretty young. Another good one was some Eckhart Tolle work. The New Power Earth. Of Power of yeah. Now. Very good. The New Earth was huge for me. It actually got me to a place where... I felt like I could step out outside of myself and see the experience from a different position. Mm -hmm. And that took me some time to get there to be able to appreciate the value of that. I've always been more of a listener than a talker, just because that's how I learn or that's, I'm a little bit of an empath like that, where I can absorb other people's issues. So I do have to be a little careful, but at the same time, there's so much value in understanding those experiences. So if people listening are a little bit more of an introvert, because I do run into a lot of them that say, I don't want to go talk to anybody or I don't want to work with a business coach, but they still need some outlets. There's great resources online on YouTube. Just watch them until you find something that resonates with you that you can say, okay, this is something that I feel can help me. Spend 10 minutes a day, spend a half an hour a day. Instead of binge watching Netflix, turn on YouTube and watch something there for free. You you don't have to talk to anybody, but you still can get some just to know that you're not alone in whatever space that you're at and that there are options. Believe me, we're evolving through different things and I'm older, but at the same time, I guess what I want to say, it's all there. You just have to be willing and open to reach out and get the help. Yeah, self-help book at bookstores is doing very well right now. It's yeah. Like- <laughs> All right. There's a lot of good stuff out there. And look for the top names. Find the stuff that makes sense. Go on YouTube and watch the summaries. Everybody's done a summary off of all the, the top self-help books. It's not that they're going to solve anything necessarily for you. Like they're not going to walk in and make your whole life better. You still have to do the work. What they're there to do is to show you that there's another way and that you don't have to stay stuck. Yeah, absolutely. It's really about understanding different perspectives. Yeah. Um, books, whether it's through books or people or whatever it is that works for you, there's options out there for sure. That's good. So I'm an entrepreneur. I'm young. I know that I'm incongruent with my job, but my family does not support me moving on and doing something on my own. What would you suggest to them? I would have them sit with themselves and ask them if them supporting themselves or their family supporting themselves, you know, which is more important, like rate that from a scale of one to 10, what's more important to you and why, and really try to dive deep into that. Like, why is your family support more important to you if it is than you supporting yourself? Do you want to please them? Uh, it's, it's usually about providing when I say please, it's we want to we want their support because we want their validation. We want their love. We almost the love is what we're really looking for. That's the center of almost everything. And we want them to appreciate us and think that we're worth it and we're valuable. So why are you basing your value off of what someone else thinks versus maybe what you know you're already capable of? Even if it's your parents? Even if it's your parents. Our parents are parents, but they're people and people are fallible. So why do your parents maybe, why why do they think they know what's best for you? Maybe you know what's best for you and what's best for you can change. Maybe they're right. Maybe, maybe you try some crazy thing and they were right and you were wrong, but at least you tried and that's what's important. Okay, good. All right. So as we come to an end here, what would be your advice for Somebody that maybe they're not struggling, but they're in indecision. So they know what they want to do, but they're afraid to take that plunge. How would you tell them to go about tipping their toe in? And it really depends on so many different factors. I would say if you're really ready and you have the financial means and you just, you're scared or you're not sure how to do it, 
get someone to help you with that. Even before I quit my job, I got a therapist. Just I know I need to quit. I just don't know when it's going to, I know it's going to happen soon. I'm just really scared. I'm like so terrified to do this. Or or if not a therapist, get some friends. Like you need support. We cannot do these things alone. We are, people are communal. We like society. Mm -hmm. We need those around us. So get some support. And let's say it's a job again, if that's the scary thing you're trying to do. Make sure you're financially set up a plan for yourself. Like in six months, if I have no money coming in, this is what it looks like. In one year, this is what it looks like. So that you are, at least your brain is able to wrap around what that look like for you and then come up with backup plans. But I think getting the support really is really key as well. Okay, good. All right. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. I really appreciate it. Really valuable things here. So if you are stuck in the middle, if you are on the fence with anything that you're trying to do through your job, through your business, through really your life, slow down for a second, be present, journal, reach out, get some help, talk to other people that can give you just another perspective. Remember, their perspective doesn't mean it's right. It's just another perspective for you to consider. So with that said, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you. I enjoyed it so much. It's such a wonderful conversation. Awesome. Thanks.